During the Second World War, the Luftwaffe experimented with a number of unorthodox designs. This included a handful of rocket-powered aircraft like the ME-163. This particular aircraft was created thanks to the somewhat unexpected combination of two different projects. One was the airframe designed by Alexander Martin Lipisch, and the second one was the rocket engine developed by Helmuth Walter. Following the testing of the first prototypes, a small series of some 10 aircraft were built that were mainly used for testing and training. Welcome to another Plane Encyclopedia Voiced article. I'm your host, Tony, and today I'll be covering the ME163A Comet. If you like what we do, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. The history of ME163 was closely related to the work and design of aircraft engineer Alexander Martin Lipisch and rocket development pioneer Helmuth Walter. Lipisch was somewhat unorthodox in his aircraft design work, to say the least. He was quite interested in the development of gliders and later aircraft that were either completely lacking a tail unit or of an all-wing configuration. In 1921, Lipisch, together with a colleague, participated in the formation of the so-called Welton's Egler GmbH or World Glider Limited Company. At that time, the Germans were prohibited from developing and building military aircraft. The Germans worked around this prohibition by instead focusing on gliders and civilian aircraft which, if needed, would be quickly converted for military use and conducted secret experiments. While glider development may seem like a waste of effort, it actually provided the Germans with an excellent foundation on which they managed to develop the Luftwaffe during the 1930s, becoming a formidable force at the start of the war. In 1925, Lippisch joined Ron Rositen Gesellschaft RRG where he soon began working on his first glider. It was named Storch 1 and incorporated his unusual all-wing design. Over the years, Lippisch also became interested in rocket technology. With assistance from Fritz von Opel, Lippisch managed to build a rocket-assisted glider. This contraption was flight tested in June 1928. This was actually the first ever rocket-assisted flight in the world. While initially successful, the glider crash-landed and caught fire the plane would be lost in the accident. This accident did not prevent Lippisch from experimenting with rocket-powered all-wing gliders. He focused his work on a powered version of his Storch 5 glider. For this project, he used an 8-horsepower DKW engine. His work was successful and he managed to find investors who were willing to provide funds for the project. This led to the development of the Delta I all-wing aircraft during the late 1920s and it was followed by Delta II, III, and IV. Following this, Lippisch joined the Deutsche Forschungsinstitut DFS, where he worked as an engineer. There, he developed a series of new glider designs, like the DFS-40. In 1938, the work of Helmuth Walter came to his attention. Walter was a young scientist who was highly interested in rocket propulsion. He managed to gain military funding, which greatly helped in his work. In 1937, he even managed to gain attention from the Reichsluftfahrtministerium RLM, German Air Ministry. The RLM formed a Sondertriebwerke, Special Propulsion System Department, with the aim of experimenting with rocket engines in the aircraft industry. While this department was mainly focused on developing rocket engines for short takeoff assistance, Walter desired a more prominent role in rocket propulsion. He intended to develop a rocket engine that could replace standard piston engines. Walter managed to develop such engine, named Walter TP-1, which was fueled by the so-called T-stoff, hydrogen peroxide, and Z-stoff, water solution of either calcium or sodium permanganate. His engine design would be tested in 1939 on the HE-176. However, the final results were disappointing and the engine did not go into production. Lepisch and his design team began working on a new project incorporating the Walter rocket engine. Initially, the project was designated simply as Antwerp X, Design X, before being changed to 8194, and finally DFS-194. Work on the prototype came to a temporary halt, as the DFS lacked proper production capabilities to finish the aircraft. To keep the project going, the RLM instructed Messerschmitt to provide the necessary manpower and production support. Given the small chance of progression in the DFS and in order to increase the speed of the project, Lippisch and his team moved to Messerschmitt's base at Augsburg at the start of 1939. He also tried to negotiate with Heinkel for the production and development of the DFS-194 project, but nothing came of this. At Augsburg, Lippisch and his team worked in Messerschmitt's newly formed Department L, 
which stands for Lippisch. The first calculations were promising, as the plane would be able to reach a speed of 550 km per hour. Once completed, the DFS-194 was transported to the secret German rocket test center at Pennemunde West Airfield during the summer of 1939. During ground tests, it was noted that the engine installation was poorly designed and too dangerous to be actually flight tested. Instead, it was decided to use the design as a glider. Surprisingly, despite this huge setback, production orders for three prototypes were given. Initially, these were designated simply as Lippisch V1, V2, and V3, but would be renamed to ME163A V1 to V3. This was mainly done to mask the true purpose of this aircraft, as this was the name given to an older rejected PF163 Messerschmitt reconnaissance aircraft project. The RLM was not satisfied with the general design of the engine compartment initially tested on the DFS-194. They requested that for further ME163 development, it would need to be substantially changed. In addition, the engine was to be replaced with the Walter R2203 engine. The engine was to have a manually regulated thrust ranging from 150 to 750 kilograms of thrust. The engine compartment was also to be completely redesigned in order to have easy access to the main components for maintenance. Following the start of the Second World War in September 1939, the work on the ME-163 slowed down but still went on. The first unpowered flight by the ME-163 V-1 prototype, in some sources marked as V-4, was carried out during early 1941. This prototype was towed by a BF-110 heavy fighter. Once at a sufficient altitude, the V-1 was released. During the test flight, the pilot, Heini Dittmar, managed to reach a speed of some 850 km per hour during a dive. While this was a great starting point for the project, Hitler, following military victories in Poland and in the West, ordered that funds for such projects be reduced. In the case of the ME-163, this meant that only two more additional prototypes were to be built. In May 1941, a wooden mock-up of an ME-163 was completed which was then transported to the Walter Werke. Once there, it was to be equipped with the R2203 engine. Once the first prototype was fully completed and equipped with this engine, the first tests were carried out at Pierre Mude West in August 1941. The test pilot was once again Heini Dittmar. After a series of test flights that lasted from August to September 1941, the ME163 prototype showed promising results. The pilot managed to reach top speeds of 800 km per hour. At this time, a second V2 prototype was also equipped with a rocket engine and used in various test flights. Ernst Uded, Director General of the Luftwaffe, was highly impressed with its performance. He even gave orders that an additional 8 prototypes were to be built, bringing the total to 13 at this time. At the start of October, Heini Dittmar said that in order to fully test the ME-163's flying performance, the fuel load had to be increased. On his personal insistence, the V3 prototype was fully fueled. This is according to W. Spate and R. P. Bateson. Other sources like M. Griel describe this aircraft as being the V8 prototype instead. On the 2nd of October 1941, he took to the sky, initially towed by a BF-110, at an altitude of 3,960 meters or 13,000 feet. Dittmar activated the engine. After reaching a speed of 965 kilometers per hour. He lost control of the aircraft as a result of compressibility effects. The prototype began a rapid descent towards the ground. He then switched off the engine, which enabled him to regain control, after which he landed safely on the ground. Later analysis of the flight indicated that Dittmar managed to reach a speed of 1,002 km per hour. As the whole project was undertaken under great secrecy, this success was not published at the time. Following these events, the ME-163 project got a temporary boost in prominence, with Hermann Göring himself placing great interest in it. Ernst Udet additionally placed an order for 70 new ME-163 airframes together with engines for the B version in October 1941. A month later, things changed dramatically for ME-163 after Udet committed suicide. His replacement, Erhard Milch, was less interested in unconventional aircraft designs like the ME-163. Work on the project, nevertheless, continued. While the ME-163 project was underway, relations soured between Willy Messerschmitt and Lippisch. Messerschmitt personally disliked the ME-163 partly due to its unique overall design, but also given that he was not involved in its development. 
By 1943, Lippisch left Augsburg and moved to Vienna. While not physically present in the design bureau, he tried to maintain contact with the ME163 development team at a distance. In the meantime, Messerschmitt was unwilling to be involved in the ME163 project, under the excuse that his company was already overburdened with production of other aircraft. For this reason, the production of further ME163 aircraft was instead given to Klemm Leichtflug Zeugbau, a relatively small aircraft company owned by Hans Klemm. While the V1 prototype was mainly used for initial testing, the V2 would serve as a base for the A0 series. An initial order of 10 A0 aircraft was previously given to Messerschmitt, but only 7 were completed. The remaining 3 aircraft were actually completed by the Clam factory. These were all completed for 1941 to 1942. The number of prototypes built is not clear in the sources. The numbers range from 1 to 8 prototype aircraft. According to S. Ransom and H. H. Kamen, while three prototypes were meant to be built initially, not all met the requested specifications except one, which received the V-4 designation. Author M. Greel, on the other hand, noted that the V-4 was the first prototype. He explained that the previous three prototypes were actually related to the initial BF-163 reconnaissance project that was rejected. Of the 10 built ME-163A0 planes, not all were equipped with fully operational engines. A number of them were instead operated as unpowered gliders. This version was not intended for combat operations and was mainly used for crew training and further experimentation. At the end of November 1943, the V-6 aircraft was lost in an accident with the loss of the pilot. In another accident at the end of 1943, another pilot died when the engine stopped working during a takeoff. While the pilot tried to turn back for a landing, having limited control, the aircraft hit a ground station radio antenna before hitting the ground and exploding. It was discovered in an investigation that the undercarriage dolly bounced off the ground much higher than usual and struck the aircraft, damaging the rocket engine. Some prominent pilots like Hanna Reich actually had the chance to flight test the ME-163 aircraft. At least one aircraft was still operational by February 1945 and was used for testing the 55mm R4M rocket by Erprobung Commando 16. The ME-163A was a high-speed rocket-powered swept-wing short fuselage mixed construction tailless aircraft. The ME-163 fuselage was built using metal, divided into three sections, the front cockpit, central fuel tank, and aft engine compartment. The wooden wings had very simple design consisting of two spars covered in thick fabric. If needed, the wings could be detached from the fuselage for transport. At the wings' trailing edges, ailerons were placed, which the pilot used for pitch and roll during flight. The wing area was 17.5 meters square. The tail did not have the standard horizontal stabilizers, instead having a single large vertical stabilizer. Despite this, no major problems during flights were ever noted on the ME-163A. For the pilot to enter the cockpit, he was provided with a ladder placed on the left side of the aircraft. The cockpit canopy opened upwards, the overall visibility was poor, and later versions would have an improved canopy. While it did offer some improvements for the pilot's line of sight, it would not resolve the overall poor visibility of the aircraft. Given that the M163A was based on a DFS-194 glider, it was equipped with minimal instrumentation needed for the aircraft to be flown. The ME-163A was powered by a single HWK-R2203 jet engine, which gave 750 kilograms of thrust. The main fuel consisted of a mix of T and Z stuff. These two chemicals were highly reactive, volatile, and prone to explosion. To avoid this, extensive preparation and security measures were necessary. The maximum speed this engine achieved was some 850 kilometers per hour. This high speed was achieved to some extent thanks to the aircraft's low weight. The empty weight was 1,140 kilograms, while the maximum takeoff weight was 2,200 kilograms. Interestingly, in order to save weight, the ME-163 did not have a conventional landing gear unit. Instead, during takeoff, it was provided with a specially designed two-wheel dolly. It would be jettisoned upon takeoff. When landing on the airfield, the ME-163 used a retractable skin located beneath the fuselage. Despite the A-series having not been designed to have any weapon systems, at least one ME-163A was tested with the installation of the 5.5cm R4M air-to-air rockets. 
The ME163A series, despite its unusual appearance and overall design, proved to be a rather successful aircraft. It had some shortcomings, mostly regarding to its dangerous fuel load. Upon completion of successful testing, order for the ME163B version was given. This concludes our look at the ME163A Comet. If you like what we do and want to see more, remember to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. Also, don't forget to take a look at our extensive collection of articles on our website, plane-encyclopedia.com. Thank you.